Hello again. Welcome to Snail Tooth Beats Castlevania. Let's begin. I don't know what I can say about Castlevania that hasn't been said a million times, but what I will say is that I agree with the general consensus and that it is awesome and it is hard. But with a little bit of practice, just like just like anything, you can you can conquer it. The first thing that you might not know is that if you jump over the door, you can get some points out of the ground. So, you might think that the point bags are kind of useless, but every 30,000 points you get, you get a you get a one up or an extra life. And that can become handy down the road depending on what stage you're on. So, I always just I always just grab them. Every hard game has to have running cats in it. So many zombies. This is kind of cool too up here. The game kind of shows you what this thing does, that like cross necklace. In like a situation where you're not going to get hit. There's all those um, zombies down there. And you grab it and it kills them all so you, the player knows. Um, you know what they do. And here's another bit of smart game design. So if you come over here, here comes a bat, but you hit it and then you find, oh, there's a pork chop in that wall. So I better be, whoops, better be on the lookout for walls that might have pork chops in them. I just call them a pork chop because that's what the game calls it. When it's, it really doesn't look like a pork chop, but, you know, whoops. That's what they call it because there's some always some great translating between Japanese and English NES games, especially especially Castlevania games. Castlevania 2 has some hilarious translations. So I already tried to trip record this once today, and uh, I got to like stage 4, and then the game froze. Cause that's what happens. That's the uh, that's the risk you run when you play on a real Nintendo. So grab that uh, tile there, and then you can throw. Whoops! You can throw two two axes at once at this guy and make quick work of him. There we go. So those tiles are hidden hidden around the levels, and um, once you get the one that says two on it, you can throw more than one special item at a time. And if you get the one that says three on it, you can throw three. So, so you can throw two or three. Otherwise, you can only throw one, and you have to wait for it to fall off screen or or disappear before you can throw another one. So they they become super handy, especially on boss fights down the road. So those knights are the first first guys that take more than one hit, but they're. Definitely not the only ones. I always like to just throw a boomerang at that guy. Whoops, a daisy. So here's the first, um, the first area with Medusa heads. The famous Medusa heads that, you know, follow like a sine curve pattern and are a real pain. Definitely just kill those two because otherwise you're going to get hit and fall down the hole. It's a super, super pain. So now I have the holy water power up. The holy water is like kind of overpowered in this game, but awesome at the same time. If you go over here, there's a pork chop in that block right there. I think, I think I found all the pork chops, but um, I'm not sure because I, I didn't look it up or anything. But I'm pretty sure I found them all, so I'll point them all out as we go along. So this game came out uh, in 1986 in Japan. So, for that pork chop, make sure you get it before you drop down, because there's no going back to get it. Okay, these things here are instant death, so be 
careful. <laughs> yeah, those things. Those things will kill you. Oh, jeez. I don't know why I insisted on going back for that heart. That was dumb. I won't do that again. But it perfectly illustrated my point of those things are instant murder. Oh, jeez. Those guys take two hits. There we go. I was going to say, when can I get my full length whip? Those guys take six hits. And they throw, they spit like fireballs at you. And um, they're not too hard to kill because you can just, you can just hit the fireballs out of the air with your whip. But um, there are a couple down in later ep later um, stages that are harder to kill because because of where they're placed. They're surrounded by Medusa heads and things like that. So here we are at Queen Medusa herself. The Medusa head. The big Medusa head. And she's not too hard to kill, really. You can kind of brute force her. Um... And she throws like little snakes at you, but she's not too hard. And just like that, we're on to stage three. I guess they they really call it stage seven, but they call each part of the stage a new stage. So I count it as a stage when you kill a boss and go to a new area. Ugh. Here's another annoying enemy is the hunchback. I always just run under them and then turn back to slash them. It seems to be the easiest thing to do, but it doesn't always work. I don't like those guys either. Those skeletons that throw pieces of themselves at you. I also don't like this part because of the, the crows. I always just do my best to go slow and kill all the crows. Let's see if I can get this guy with some holy water. <gasps> ah. ah! I was pressing the wrong button for the stairs. Oh. I'm getting worse at Castlevania today. I've been playing it for too much. You know when you play a hard game and start to get good at it, and then you just you sort of plateau, and then you start to get worse at it. I think that's what's happening to me right now. There we go, that's better. They conveniently sort of fly up and stop, and then there we go. If you can uh, get them while they're stopped, they're much, much less of a pain. More Medusa heads. So this looks like a good spot for a pork chop, but there isn't one, so don't bother. So we have the um, stopwatch time stopper power up now, which is a great one to have for this area because of all these birds. It's nice to just be able to stop time and kill the birds. Especially in this upcoming section. Stage 9, I guess it will be. Yeah. Yeah. Jumping and killing those crows is pretty key. Oh, uh, whoops. 
So, okay, after when you make this jump, get ready to swing the whip, because there's another skeleton. So here's some Medusa heads and one of these guys, so I just like to use the stopwatch there. Oh, that was close. Um, the stopwatch doesn't work on these guys anyway. There's a pork chop right here, so that's good. Uh, if you can get on the inside, underneath like the stairs, it's a pretty good spot to be. There we go. Those guys aren't too hard either. They just take a, li a little bit of practice and a lot of whip swinging. Okay, here we go. On to another stage. I like the map. I like how you get to see. See how we're about to go down underneath? There we go, falling down into the hole. Oh, I should have grabbed that. That, uh, that power-up is kind of nice for this area. Yeah, I knew that was going to happen. Try that again, I'll actually get the power-up this time. There we go. I'm just gonna use it. I don't want I don't want that merman thing to come up again. Now here it seems like the yeah, the bats are on like a on like a timer. Like they don't necessarily come when you jump but they come after a certain amount of time. And then here I just like, oh, I have the holy water now. I don't have the stopwatch anymore. Usually I like to use the stopwatch there and to avoid getting hit by uh, birds and mermen, but worked out all right. This area is the first area with birds that drop hunchbacks. So this is pretty key to just sort of kill each one as you go along or else they start to pile up and it becomes really difficult. So just keep making forward progress and killing even the ones that come behind you. Oops, could have gone back for that invincibility potion but it doesn't matter. Keep running straight and you can get right underneath that guy. And kill them from behind is a lot easier. This is where the game froze on me last time. I'm not gonna get that. I'm gonna keep the holy water. Actually, holy water is. is I might have said earlier that it's overpowered. It's because it stun locks things. Oops. Um. Which, which makes it makes bosses down the down the line a lot easier. I hate these guys, by the way. There's a pork chop right here. And by stun lock, I mean like when you hit it. See how it gets stopped right there. So it takes a bunch of hits, and it gets stopped in um, in place. That's that's handy. Lucky that we got a tile there. Um, so you can you can get bosses to sort of sit in one spot and just take a million hits. Let's see if I can get to work with this guy. Uh, not so much. There we go. That worked out all right. I was almost dead. So if you get if you get game over and have to fight the Frankenstein's Frankenstein's monster without the holy water, and you don't get super lucky like I did with the with the tile, um, the throwing knife only does it doesn't really hurt him that much. Like it takes two throwing knives to take off one hit point. So just use your whip and hit Frankenstein in the head and dodge the hunchbacks, and uh, you'll be okay after a few tries probably. 
Okay, so this is perfect actually, because we want to get through this stage with uh, holy water intact. There's holy water right here usually, but I already have it, so it just gave me a uh, a, a point bag. But um, if we can get to the boss of this stage with holy water, and um, and the third the three tile will be in in good shape because. The boss of this stage is the Grim Reaper, which is definitely the hardest thing in this game. Um, even harder than Dracula, in my opinion. But uh, with the stun locking power of the Holy Water, you can get by him pretty easily. Oh, oh no. Oh no, I just got a knife. Well that sort of ruins it, doesn't it? Oh jeez. Okay, well, I'll probably not be able to get by the Grim Reaper on this go. There's a pork chop, by the way. Um, but I'm gonna try. And if I if I don't, and I get game over, then I'll make another run at it with uh, with the holy water. So here's the the first instance of the the ruthless knights that take nine hits. So the first one, if you get him to go off screen, he's just he's just gone forever. But this guy here, I like to get him close to the edge. Oops. Once he throws an axe, I like to go up and give him what for. So when you have the holy water, that candle that I just hit right there is an axe, and you don't want anything to do with that. So just ignore that in the future. This is, this is kind of pointless, because it's so much harder to kill the, Green, the Grim Reaper this way. But if I can do it, I'll be very pleased. I have done it, but it's just so much easier with the Holy Water. Plus, you can kill these guys a lot, a lot easier with Holy Water. Ugh. Oh no. There's another pork chop coming up, so we're, we're okay for health, really. As long as I don't get hit again. Which it definitely isn't guaranteed. This stage right here sort of determines how, how long it takes me to beat the game. Because this is the hardest stage for sure. The last stage isn't nearly as hard as this one. So without the holy water, going over here and getting the boomerang is pretty key. Um, but if you have the holy water, just ignore the boomerang, obviously. Sometimes I just... There's been a number of times where I get all the way up to here with the holy water, and then I just go get the boomerang out of habit, because I've spent a lot of time grabbing it. Here's the other pork shop. And that's a super pain. So here's... Here's what a lot of people say is the hardest part of the game, is this hallway. With the Medusa heads and the knights that take a lot of hits. I find that jumping and whipping is a pretty good strategy. Because when you jump, you have a chance of jumping over the axe. And the oh, that was bad. The Medusa heads uh, will spawn up a little higher and they're easier to dodge. Okay, here we go. This is going to go poorly, I'm sure. But we'll give it a whirl. So you have to... Oh, okay, well... You have to kill... You have to focus on killing the... The sickles. Otherwise you will not survive. Ugh! Because they follow you. They follow you so ruthlessly. And they come from above and they hit you. And you can't whip upwards. Don't get hit again. Thank you. I'll try again, I guess. If not, I'm doing it the holy water way. I don't care. A lot of the times when you come up those stairs, there's one of these red bones guys coming after you. And that makes it a, an, an annoying experience. 
So you gotta make sure they just go slow and make sure you don't get hit by the red bones. So far so good. Oh, I thought I could maybe dodge that one. Not the case. I love when Simon Belmont can jump backwards. I don't know how to make that happen on command, but it looks pretty cool. Okay, here we go again. See what I mean? You gotta, you gotta, you gotta kill these things. And just hope that you hit uh, the Grim Reaper. Yes, yes, yes. Oh, thank goodness. Woo, Nelly. Wow. If you want to see the Holy Waterway, just look it up. There's videos on YouTube. But basically, you stand on the edge of the platform I'm standing on now and just throw Holy Water up onto that other platform, and the Grim Reaper gets stun locked, and you can kill him that way. Oh, my heart is pounding. Whew. Okay, last stage. I swear, if the, uh, if the game freezes on me now, I'm going to be super angry. So here's a bunch of bats. I like to just run under that first one. Jump over this one. If you get lucky, they don't attack you very hard. Ugh. Jump over this guy, too. So far, so good. And just ignore that one. Okay, that was lucky. Usually, they aren't that friendly. Sometimes you get lucky, and they are friendly like that. Other times, they just... They just uh, come after you. And by come after you, I mean come at you full speed. So as you walk over here, don't go all the way over to that wall if there's nothing in that wall. And if you go over to that wall, it starts spawning birds carrying hunchbacks. So it's just, just don't do that. If you turn your back on the bones, guys, they come after you. Whoa! Whoops. So like for, for instance, this guy. Walk over here and turn your back to him. He'll jump up and you can slash him. Oh man. Same with this guy. Go over here, he'll come at you, and you can get him. Come here, man. See, ah, oh, I gotta not do that. Same thing twice. Come here, friend. Okay, I gotta do it this time. I don't wanna get game over. I really don't like these guys. You know what? I'm just gonna go up the stairs. Take a hit. Make sure you kill him before going too far, though. Oh, he's, he, he disappeared. Fantastic, because once you get over here... This is what happens. Hunchbacks and birds. Down here is a pork chop, which is pretty handy. And then if you can just fall down here and go down the stairs. Good. Ugh. It's okay, as long as we get through this part, we'll be fine. Hooray. Okay, here we go. Good, 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 good. Because right here, this is a continue point. Um, so even if you get game over, like you just start right here, which is great. So I just did that so I'd have full health. And we're about to fight Dracula. So you kind of got to come up here and you know get the full length whip, the, the vampire killer. You need the vampire killer to kill the, kill the vampire. And if you go back down and come back up, you can get some more hearts. So you need at least, you need a few hearts to, to kill the second form, in the way that I do it anyway. Because Dracula has more than one form. And get him over here and get the holy water. So for this guy, stand about here, and when he opens his cape, jump over his projectile. 
and then slash his head. I like to stand sort of in the middle because he generally doesn't spawn in the middle and when he does you can just move away from him. So whenever he spawns like on top of you like that, move in the direction that he is facing. Otherwise he turns around and you just get hit by him. So that's not fun. And you gotta be pretty quick to hit his head. Um, otherwise, there's like is it the window of actually being able to deal damage before he disappears is pretty small. So far so good though. I'm glad I practiced today. This is going well. If I get this first try, I'll be super pleased. Usually take at least one hit, but standing standing in the middle really helps. Because I used to run back and forth, and he spawns on the edges more. One more hit. I'm actually just gonna wait until he's on the edge. That's better. Here comes his second form. Hit him with the holy water. And hit him in the head. Oh man. So the holy water kind of stun locks him for a little bit. It's a lot better if you have the tile. Oh, I'm gonna get hit. Go away, away, away. If you throw the holy water just right, it hits his projectiles too, and you can sometimes get a tile out of it. Yes! First try! First try! Ah, hooray! Thank goodness gracious. Castlevania 1 is in the books. Phew. Again, my heart is pounding. Let's see. Oh, I have no idea how long that took. I hope it didn't take very long. I kept having to reset because the game was freezing on me. And we get to watch the castle crumble. Produced by Konami, directed by Trans Fishers. <laughs> James Banana and Vran Stoker. So this is what they call a, a joke. This is great um, AVGN episode about Castlevania where he talks about Boris Karloff and Love Cheney Jr. So, like, the game is based on, it's full of, like, the classic horror tropes. You know, like, all the universal horror monsters, like Frankenstein's monster, the mummy, um, Dracula, all that stuff. So, they just started putting in, uh, you know, actors' names, but, but changing the levers. The, the letters, I mean. Simon Belmendo. You played the greatest role in this story. Thank you. Thank you for playing. It was my pleasure, and thank you for watching. That's a great game. I'm happy I'm happy to have uh, to have done it, and thanks a lot for watching. We'll catch you next time.